Welcome back to Total FIFA Career Mode with our brand new career, Retake the Bundesliga. And we're going to be retaking it at the helm of Werder Bremen. The four-time champs have fallen on hard times, but we're going to bring them back to Bundesliga glory with a total youth rebuild as we always do. While we're getting set up, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. You can also follow us on Twitter at TotalFIFACM, on Instagram at TotalFIFACareerMode, and of course we're going to track every stat, every win and loss, every event for this entire career on our website, TotalFIFACareerMode.com. Just a quick review of how we do this. We always play on Ultimate, even with the terrible new update that FIFA put out. And we do leave that transfer window open at the start because we're going to gut this team like a fish. You can see we're going to do a preseason tournament with some nice competition, which will give us a good chance to test out all the new players and some, some formations we're going to try. And we really are going to have a ton of turnover. You can see the current starting lineup. The only guy that's going to make it on this new team is Max Egestein. And then we're also going to keep his younger brother, Johannes, and Josh Sargent. Those are going to be the three holdovers that stay in the starting lineup. Remember, when I do these careers, my main rule is generally that nobody over the age of 22 is going to be on the team getting any playing time in the first year. So they have some young quality talent to work with, but generally speaking, we have to clean house. Next thing we're going to do is get this budget adjusted. And you can see what we're working with. Once we adjust the sliders, we're going to have about $20 million here, which is good enough to get us one up-and-coming young star. But we've got a guy in mind, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Before we introduce the new guys on the team, let's take a look at our board objectives because, you know, we have to make sure we don't get fired here. Of course, they want us to get to European play, so do we. Finish mid-table first season, that shouldn't be too tough. Their youth development goes right in line with what I want to do. Sign at least three players 20 or younger and get the average age down. That'll be no problem whatsoever. Um, and then just your general growth and financial type objectives that are always there. So these shouldn't be too tough to achieve. Hopefully I can keep the bosses happy so I don't get fired for some ridiculous FIFA reason. Um, but it's pretty much in line with what I had planned on doing anyway. Our first acquisition is going to be Phil Foden, and he's really the focal point of this entire career. He happens to be my favorite player, but more importantly, this is the last year you're really going to be able to justify acquiring him in any kind of career mode unless you're doing one with one of the really big boys, Barcelona, Real Madrid, down the road. And even that, he's a Stockport-born, Man City blue, through and through. He loves the club, and he doesn't really want to leave. So it's not really all that realistic that we acquired him, except that if you remember back to the start of the season, there was a, a, a lot of rumor and speculation and a valid argument to be made that he'd be better off going somewhere else and getting some playing time uh, rather than sitting on the bench for Manchester City. If you forget the fact that he's gotten a lot more playing time this year and has done very well, at this point they definitely wouldn't part with him because he's the successor to David Silva. But at the start of the year, there was a lot of rumor and speculation that he would be better off getting some playing time somewhere else. Additionally, Manchester City desperately needs some defense that is showing this year, and we all knew that at the start of the year, and that was out there. So I've managed to trade a defender for him and pony up $20 million. Now, in all reality, they would either require $20 million and a much more premium defender, which I don't have, or a defender of this caliber and probably more like $40 or $50 million, but I don't have $50 million. Uh, FIFA actually only asked for about 17 or 18. I paid 20, which is pretty much my entire transfer budget, just to try and make it as realistic as I could. Um, but I'll admit that this is not the most realistic transfer for me. It's the one I did because I want to enjoy this. He's my favorite player. And if I don't get to do a career with Phil Foden now, I'm not going to get to do one ever outside of doing one with Manchester City, which is not that much fun in the game because they have too much money. And even though I'm a supporter, it's not the best career mode experience for me. So Phil Foden, he's going to be that center forward, uh, center attacking mid uh, position for us that really is the focal point of the offense. He's our star. He's our guy. It all kind of centers around him. Next up is Weston McKinney. And this is the other transfer that I've made that is probably pretty unrealistic, but he happens to check 
every box of, of what I'm looking for and happens to be another favorite of mine. He's tall, he's six foot one. he's extremely versatile, he can play anywhere on the pitch without really losing a whole lot of uh, skill attributes, and as you can tell, I'm American and so is he, so he's been a favorite of mine for years, I love watching him with Schalk, that's probably why it's unrealistic, Schalk is having a good year, um, he's you know a guy that they're going to want to have around for a long time, so they're probably not parting with him, although he's not playing a lot this year as it turns out, so... Perhaps they would have parted with him, but I doubt it. This one's a little unrealistic, but he's a guy I absolutely had to have. He's going to anchor the defensive midfield on our 4-3-3, um, you know, and, and really be a key point for us. Not to mention, I can move him around wherever, so as guys get tired, and he's got great stamina, so he should play a ton, but as I have to, to move guys around and, 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 you know, make up for lack of stamina and fatigue and things like that, he's a guy I can put in any position on the pitch and be just fine. So he's a key cog for us. From here on out, everybody else has been somewhat available. So our next big acquisition is Benoit Badachil, an 18-year-old French defender from AS Monaco who, before this season, was rumored to be being pursued by the likes of Man United and Wolves. Uh, now, he has since signed a contract extension, but again, we're starting this back in July, and so he was definitely being shopped around for substantial amounts of money. He's the guy that's going to cornerstone our defense. He's a six foot four, young, talented defender, and he's going to really anchor the back line. All right, next, we're going to turn the focus back to offense with the acquisition of Francisco Trincao, a Portuguese 19-year-old from SC Braga, and he's really playing with their B team right now, and he's definitely available because there were rumors of Arsenal pursuing him for most of 2019. So he's definitely a guy that is, is available for transfer, and he's really come on strong as a, with a, as a high potential kind of guy, and he's gonna be our starting right winger. Uh, he can also fill in as a second striker and play pretty much anywhere on the offensive side of the field. All right, next up is Mohamed Simakan, the central defender coming from Strasbourg Alsace. And he's going to partner with Badashil in that back line and really give me two big hulking defenders. He's six foot two, Badashil is six foot four. That is two big, strong defenders who can handle pretty much any attacker coming at us. So, oh, and he's, he's definitely a guy that has been rumored to be uh, possibly on the move. He was linked to Southampton, Watford, and Crystal Palace just in the last couple weeks. So he's definitely a guy that they'd be willing to part with. All right, so we got the center part of our back line solidified, but now we got to get the wings. And that's where Owen Vagdal comes in. He's a 19-year-old left back from AZ Alkmaar. He can play wing back. He can actually play a lot further up the field as well, which is part of why I'm interested in having him. I like the versatility. But he's going to be our starting left back, and I'm really excited about what he can contribute to the offense and also help do to solidify the defense. You know, not a lot of transfer rumors on him, but, you know, the uh, Arena VC has always been a place where young talent moves on from, and if they're going to go anywhere, they're going to go play for Virgil de Kruger, one of the best Dutch players of all time. So it's only a matter of time before somebody snatches it up, and I'm pretty excited for that to be up. Playing opposite Vagdal is actually a pretty similar player in Liberato Kaseki. He's an 18-year-old New Zealander who, again, can play all over the field. Now, he's best on the outside, and we're going to start him at right back or right wing back, depending on the formation. But he can play right middle. He can play up on the on the wing. He can actually play in the center of the field, too, with really without uh, dropping off too much. But we're going to try and keep him out on the outside if we can. All right, so we've shored up the back line. We got our starting four back there. But we haven't addressed the goalkeeper yet, so that's where we have Luis Maximiano coming in. 20-year-old Portuguese goalkeeper, 6'3", big strapping dude from Sporting CP. Now, that's a pretty good program, but he's not playing much there. He's stuck behind a veteran. He hasn't gotten his chance yet, and we're going to give it to him. We make the move, wasn't cheap, but we get our starting keeper. This is a guy that is good enough to play right now, but also has big time potential for the future. So he's perfect, he's exactly what we're looking for. All right, so we've got our starting 11, or what will be our typical go-to starting 11 all settled. Now we gotta get some depth, because we're obviously gonna need to play more than 11 guys. First guy I'm gonna add is Ryan Gravenberch. He's a 17-year-old midfielder from Ajax. Um, he's an attacking midfielder, he can play either that cam roll or as our backup midfielder behind Max Egestein. Um, he's definitely gonna get plenty of playing time. I've seen him compared to Paul Pogba, which is a, a very high compliment 
So he's a real highly uh, versatile guy in the midfield that can play inside, outside, anywhere we need. So he's going to be very valuable to us. Similarly, we have our next acquisition, which is Jeremy Duku. He's a 17-year-old winger from RSC Anderlecht. And he's probably a guy Anderlecht should be holding on to. But again, they're a, an organization playing in a league where guys outgrow and move on from. We're grabbing him a year or two early because that's what we like to do. But he's a really talented player. Duku is fast. And I mean freaking fast. He's got pace for days. He's, he's a little bit on the small side, but he's quick. And he's going to actually split some time on that left wing with, with Jeremy Agustin. He's not quite as good right now, but he's got considerably higher potential. And he's probably going to end up outgrowing him, or at least that's the hope. But he's definitely going to split some time out on that left wing uh, with, with Agustin. And he's a four-star weak foot, and he's right-footed. So he can play on either side for us, which is going to be extremely valuable. All right, next up, we wanted to get a third center back. Um, to go along with Barashil and Simakan. And the guy we pinpointed that we were able to get was Jaka Bajul. Now this is a big six foot three Slovenian kid. And he's not quite as athletic as those other two, but he's big and strong. And we're gonna play some three back sets. And when we do, he's gonna be the third starting center back. So he's gonna get plenty of chances to play, not to mention working in the rotation. So he might not be as, as quick twitch and mobile as the other two guys but he's every bit the defender and every bit the physical presence back there, so he's a, a really great third option for us. Last but not least, we've got Joshua Wagnerman. He's an 18-year-old German from Hamburg SV, but he's not getting to play with them much, and he is going to be uh, a guy that gets in our rotation. He's going to be our backup out on the left and right back and the wing backs, depending on the formation we use. And I like him because he's a big guy with pace. I like big guys that can also move. He's six foot two, and he can actually get up and down the field pretty well, so he can join the attack, but get back on defense as well, and hopefully not leave us exposed. So he's gonna be a real good, versatile option for rounding out our bench nicely. All right, so that's the squad we're gonna enter the season with. We are young, we are talented, and we are hungry. We're ready to retake the Bundesliga. In our next episode, you'll see Game 1 of League Action. Thanks for joining us here at Total FIFA Career Mode. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And check out our website, TotalFIFACareerMode.com. Also follow us on Twitter at TotalFIFACM and Instagram at TotalFIFACareerMode. Thanks for joining us on Episode 1 of Retake the Bundesliga by Total FIFA Career Mode.